Welcome to another edition of the House Whisperer Show on WWDB Talk 860. I'm Barry Reisman, inviting you to stay tuned for expert advice about maintaining your house from the roof all the way down to the basement. Featuring professional home inspector Jack Milne, who tells us that every house has a story, and he knows them all, too. Hey, Jack, how you doing this morning? Great, Barry. It's uh, it's nice to be back in the daylight. I know this yeah, yeah. week was daylight savings time, but, you know, I'm a, I'm a light guy. I just, I, I, I don't want to say I get depressed, but I do get a little bit down. You know, when you wake up in the morning, it's dark, and by dinner now, it's dark, and, uh, so I always look forward to the light, but the other thing, Barry, I look forward to, honestly, is December 22nd, and the reason for that is the winter solstice, so it's the shortest day of the year, uh, and then we get forward to, I look forward to lighter mornings and lighter evenings, but, um, you know, a few, what I find is just a couple minutes a day makes a difference, so... Um, to all my listeners, as we approach the winter holidays, you know, now with Thanksgiving upon us, uh, Hanukkah and Christmas, you know, people do get a little bit crazy. And uh, I, I'm noticing it already when it gets dark early, uh, different attitudes with driving skills. So I ask that you be careful. You know, if need be, take that extra second at a stop sign or a street light because there's a good chance that people won't slow down or stop because the traffic light just turned yellow. And, um, and I think most of the drivers at this time of year have this, like, I think I can make it attitude. And, and I'm noticing this all, all, a lot now, too. Look for drivers who forget to put their lights on. Um, and it's been dark for the last half hour. So, you know, it's, it's a season of the nuts. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> so, um, so today's topic is the garage, a man's favorite place and a woman's place to put stuff. I love your topic. It's a, it's a whimsical story today, Barry, uh, but, uh, but I think uh, especially with the time of year approaching, uh, we can all learn a few things. So um, before we kick in, though, I, I always want to thank my sponsors because without them, I wouldn't be able to chat with you today. So Bucksmont Inspections, Rob Bowie, uh, they do on-site sewage evaluation, uh, repair, and installation. They're out of Sellersville, but they do serve a, a fairly large area. Their number is 215-669-4213. Borrow exterminating out of Glen Olden, Pennsylvania. Termite and radon testing. They're at 610-586-5640. Pest Blaster out of Hamilton, New Jersey. But again, they cover a large swath of territory as well. Uh, radon, mold, wood destroying insects, pest removal. As we start to get darker earlier, folks, and we're starting to close our houses up, really be cognizant of mold. If you're putting the kids downstairs and say, go down there for the next six hours and then come up for dinner, check for radon. And if you're hearing little critters scatter over your ceilings, definitely call them for for pest removal. So they're at 215-295-5555, brainflushgear.com. Again, I've been on uh, working with Kevin uh, for our next uh, motorcycle journey and got some good ideas and we're putting them together. So uh, contact at brainflushgear.com is their email. And finally, Tri-County Inspection Company, um, which serves 15 counties. Um, I suggest you go to the website, folks, at tcinspect.com. We have local numbers. I never wanted that 1-800 impression, but we serve Bucks and Montgomery County, Delaware County, Lehigh Valley, North Jersey, South Jersey. We've been into Berks County a lot lately, too. So if those airways stretch that far, um, please give us a buzz at 215-295-2030, and we'll help you through. So please let the, the, the sponsors know you heard their ad on the House Whisperer show. I think that would be awesome. So we're going to hit the email box real quick, then we're going to get into our segment. Uh, this email is from David from Brumo. He goes, Jack, I'm getting ready to do some flooring in my 25-year-old colonial. I've heard of Pergo, engineered laminates, and hardwoods, as well as real hardwood. Uh, can you do a show on this topic? So, you know, David, thanks for the idea, because I would say within the next few weeks, I'm going to be introducing uh, my listeners to a fellow by the name of John Donlon. 
Martin Donlin. He's from Tight Threads. And together, John and I will break it all down for you. So keep listening to The House Whisperer. And please, folks, for any emails, please send them to thehousewhisperershow.com. And for all previous shows, uh, look to thehousewhisperershow.com. Um, and any day, every day, listen to the podcast at www.db.com uh, because I'm here for you. So let's get started. I had fun writing this show. It's, uh, the topic is the garage, a man's favorite place and a woman's place to put stuff. So, and to make myself perfectly clear and politically correct, I do not, will not disparage women from moving stuff from the house to the garage. But, <laughs> but I do know personally that when my wife takes something from our house and doesn't know what to do with it, it ends up on my workbench um, front and center. I can't miss it. Now, it may be the kids' toys, you know, uh, bats and balls, golf, golf clubs, whatever it is, uh, you know, I, I have to put them away. But sometimes it, it goes to the attic over my garage or some items that she puts there has a 50-50 chance of survival. So I'm standing there looking at the item, and the good and the bad angel both sit on my shoulder, and I make that decision if we should really and tr do we really and truly need this, uh, or do I just let it go? So, for example, a vase, Barry, a vase. Now, if you were in my shoes and your bride brings down a vase that says we don't want this in the house anymore, 50-50 says you keep it and store it. The other 50 says, ah, let's get rid of it. So I figure if the vase is on my bench and my wife clearly made that decision that it doesn't belong in the house, I'm going to make sure it fits squarely in the trash can. Uh, and it's totally <laughs> out of here. Now, if the item on the bench would help another family, and especially kids, that item will be set aside and delivered personally to the Salvation Army or Goodwill within the next few days. Because one thing about my garage is I keep it uh, as clean and uh, clutter-free as possible. So, plus it does Goodwill, and, and, and I love that part of, of contributing. So when we buy our homes as guys, we understand that as men, we are really limited to a few distinct areas, typically the garage and the basement. And I know when we bought our house in 1987, I needed a two-car garage and a basement. That way, uh, I could finish in the near future the basement, and um, my wife wanted a big kitchen and walk-in closets. Uh, but uh, they, they were not really an option uh, when the house was built in 1968. So over the past 25 years, yeah, she does have a remodeled kitchen, um, but I still can't satisfy those walk-in closets. We'll come right back and talk more about Jack's, one of Jack's favorite places, the garage. There we go. All right, we'll be right back, everybody, right after these important messages. Oro Exterminating has been specializing in wood-destroying insect inspection and control for over 40 years. Serving Philadelphia and the surrounding counties, all inspectors are state certified and ensure providing their clients with professional inspections and treatments. Oro not only performs conventional termite treatments, but also handles special services like historic buildings and homes with wells, creeks, or ponds. The client is assured that all treatments will be performed safely when you hire Boro to do the work. They also provide radon testing in their service area. Boro's full-time office staff is available to help you schedule an appointment. Just call 610-586-5640 or send an email request to boroinspects at verizon.net. That's 610-586-5640 or email at boroinspects at verizon.net. Specially created t-shirts by BrainPlushGear.com offer the extreme sports enthusiast an opportunity to have a clothing line available that suits their sport. BrainPlushGear.com understands that when we get the moment where we can jump on our motorcycles, wave runners, surfboards, snowmobiles, or skateboards, it can be priceless. They offer custom artwork including silk screening, transfers, and embroidery. Speak to one of their consultants today and they'll help you create your own brain. Flush. Visit BrainFlushGear.com or email them at contact at BrainFlushGear.com. 
your septic inspection and testing needs, please consider Bucksmont Inspections. They've been serving the Bucks and Montgomery County areas for over 15 years. As members of the Pennsylvania Septage Management Association, the Pennsylvania Association of Sewage Enforcement Officers, and the Pennsylvania Association for Professional Soil Scientists, Bucksmont Inspections can inspect your existing septic system or test for your new septic system placement. Please call Rob Bowie at 215-669-4213 and say you heard their ad on the House Whisperer Show. As the weather gets cooler and the temperatures drop, the bugs might slow down, but the rodents don't stop. Mice and rats begin to invade homes during the fall and winter months looking for food, warmth, and a comfortable place to nest. Don't wait for pesky rodents to invade your home. Fight back! Have your home baited and ready for their attack with Pest Blaster. Whether preventative or a full-blown infestation, give Pest Blaster a call at 215-295-5555 and they can discuss the solution to your problem. They also offer humane animal removal services for a wide variety of wild animals, damage repairs, and cleanups. Call them today at 215-295-5555 or check them out at PestBlaster.com servicing both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Pest Blaster, 215-295-5555 or PestBlaster.com for all your pest control needs. Tri-County Inspection Company has been providing professional home inspections, commercial inspections, and historic property evaluations for over 25 years. Tri-County Inspection Company covers 13 counties, serving both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. They've performed inspections for over 70,000 clients and are members of the American Society of Home Inspectors, as well as the Pennsylvania Home Inspectors Coalition. They are licensed in both Philadelphia and New Jersey. For all of your real estate transactions, Transactions. Call Tri-County Inspections at 215-295-2030. For their New Jersey clientele, call 856-853-4224. In PA, call 215-295-2030. In New Jersey, 856-853-4224. Jack, Jack, Bill, and the House Whisperer here at WWDB talking about a great topic, uh, garages. And, Jack, uh, back to you. Well, thank you, Barry. Yeah, a nice, whimsical look at some of the spaces that we kind of take for granted, but we weren't really planned that way. So, again, garages and, and space and, and the collection of stuff. So, folks, with the holidays approaching, if you open up your garage overhead door and cannot fit in it without becoming a gymnast, it's time to go through it now. Forget garage sales. Um, unless you're a professional garage sale person, uh, if you do, you know, if you do hold more than four garage sales a year, uh, you're a superstar. But at the same time, I think you've become a prisoner of your stuff and maybe label, label the hoarder. So what I ask you to do is pull the stuff out of the garage, but as you do, organize it. In other words, put your sports, your sports stuff here, your lawn stuff there, I mean from the mower to the rakes to the shovels, and slowly and methodically make piles so the kids and the wife can actually make decisions as to what can stay and what goes. You have to re- use a little bit of reverse psychology. And one thing it does teach my kids, and I taught them very early in life, that, honey, here's all the things that were in your toy box from the time that you were two years old to the time you were six years old. It's time to look through them and decide what you want and what you don't want. And for those items that are still in good or great condition, let's give them to a child who needs it. And it's the same thing with the wife. So they, they actually contribute um, to the process of cleaning out the garage. So... As a dad and husband, as well as a chief negotiator, and as it is your garage, you can now see the back wall of the garage, and for the first time in maybe, I hate to say, eight to ten years or any other period of time, you hold the final say. Now, explain. 
explain to all involved that you plan to donate their items um, that have sat dormant uh, through the years, and again, to the needy. And if it's furniture, Habitat for Humanity, it can also go to women's shelters, which I contribute to a lot, and other organizations that can put your items into the hands of others who will smile and appreciate your family's efforts. Finally, anything that's worthless, discard it. Any paint or chemicals, you may need to contact the township and follow instructions provided by them. For any donations, I ask, and, and uh, as I do, obtain receipts and list the items donated. You should really talk to your accountant about how these donations can count on your taxes. So when, when you go through your stuff and you decide what you want to donate, it's, it's, it, it's a benefit for those who you're giving to, but it's also a reward for you on, on your taxes. So in, in my opinion, everybody wins. So being the eternal optimist, I can now see in front of me a cleaned out garage. The, pot, the piles are gone, and you stand in front of a clean garage for the first time in years. You have big dreams. Will my car go in here? Will my wife's car go in here? Better negotiate early, man, or a workshop. The opportunities are endless. And think organization. Shelving can be added, you know, up higher. Uh, the push mower can maybe fit in the corner. The trash can can go over here. But bottom line, uh, you basically are starting with a clean canvas, and you are the artist. Move things around. Make an appropriate balance and, and make your, your, your new limited possessions work so you can be proud to open the garage and show your neighbors that you can be organized. But let's take a look at that garage door. Now, you probably haven't seen the other side of it for years, so with winter almost upon us and your car now entering the garage for the first time, um, since you bought the car in 2008, what condition is the door, the tracks, the wheels, and the pulleys? All this, all, are there safety cables between the springs? Are the tracks and wheels lubricated? Is the locking bar disabled or removed since you put a garage door opener on about five years ago? Um, and when was the last time that you actually tried the safety reverse feature? Um, because personally, folks, these need to be tested periodically. And when I do a home inspection, what I do is I push the transmitter. I let the door come down to my arm, offering resistance, and the door should reverse. If it doesn't, simple adjustments can be made to complete this task. Push the transmitter again. Now I want you to test the lasers. If the lasers aren't literally seeing eye to eye, what you need to do is readjust them accordingly. So if one yellows and one's green, they're not seeing each other. Now granted, if you sweep your leg across the laser, chances are it's, it's enough of a break that the door will track back up. But if it's whacked out, I mean, due to placement of the trash cans or gas cans or anything else that may rest against those lasers, recalibrate them. Plus, I can't tell you how many home inspections I do where the lasers are mounted to the concrete slab. Folks, that's the wrong place because it's easy enough for a child to push the button, casually walk over the laser, get hit by the door, and then someone gets hurt. The proper placement of those lasers is 12 to 18 inches off the concrete slab. So they, they make these funny brackets, and the, the reason they're funny looking is because they're designed to clip onto the track of the garage door without impeding the operation of the door itself. Now, granted, as an adult, yes, it's absolutely going to make it harder for you to go ahead and push the button and get outside the door before it goes all the way down. And I have to do it a few times as a home inspector, and I call it the reverse limbo. But at the end of the day, it's about the kids, and it's about their safety, and you should be smart enough to put either a, a, a doorbell button, which I like to use, near the entry of the garage door. So if I, if I want to open or close the garage door and I'm outside the boundaries of the door, I push the doorbell button. It goes down all by itself. It's amazing how it works. And it's doorbell wire, and you can wire right back to the end of the machine that controls the guide. Um, of course, today's garage door openers, most of them now come with a, uh, a transformer uh, that gets mounted on the garage door jam. 
so this way you can get in or get out uh, with complete safety. So um, if you don't have a way to get into the garage, for example, uh, a lot of homes I do, you have to walk outside and then hit the transmitter or the button uh, to get into the garage. Make sure that you pull, that you install a, a release cable through the garage door that's activated by a key. Because God forbid, if you lose power, we've been doing that more and more in this region, uh, if you have to get your car out and you don't have any way to get into the garage door because of power loss, what you do is you insert the key, you twist it, and out comes a cable. You pull the cable, that's going to pull on what I call the rip cord, which is that nice red cord with a plastic handle on it, and that will release your garage door. Then you open it up like you normally would. And I remember years ago when uh, the employees that worked for my wife said she couldn't get to work because she couldn't get in the garage door. And I just kind of lazily rolled over and said, insert the key, pull the ripcord, and tell you you'll see it at work on time. So in closing, if the possessions that from your home are finding their way into the garage, stand proud and tall. Make the decision. You could be judge, jury, and executioner if you need to, to determine if something stays or goes or donates. But to me, as we approach the holiday season, I was always taught that it's better to give than receive. And when, when, when I receive, I like to give back because someone will always say thank you. And, you know, I don't think there's anything, you know, better than that. So garages, they're, they're wonderful places. They're waterproof locations. Um, they tend to be overwhelmed if you have children. If you have children, if you have children, it's a, a, a C N and H. Um, you know their toys tend to take over, but as they grow, their toys tend to get smaller. We don't have tricycles; we have bicycles. Uh, as they get beyond the age of bicycles, again, uh, there there are times that you want to bring the child in and say, "Do we really need this anymore?" And, uh, and then everybody can move on. And I think it's a good sign of maturity for the kids to say, no, Dad, I need it. I don't need it. Why don't we give it to someone who can? So, Barry, any questions for me, sir? Well, I, I, I want to tell you about a little non-technical trick that I figured out. Give you, so speaking about garages, uh, if, if I ever take our dog for a walk, we usually go out the garage. Uh, and we have a, a garage uh, opener, and I open the garage and walk out, and we walk around the neighborhood, me and my dog. And it occurred to me that if nobody's home, and I don't have my keys with me, and something happens like a power loss or the garage door breaks, I won't be able to get back in the house, right? So I have a little trick. I figured I figured out all by myself. I took a piece of string and I attached a key to the garage door opener. So I can ah. so so a very non technical, low tech, but guess what? If I ever can't get into the garage, I've got the key to the front door right there. Well, you know, that's a good idea. And, you know, sometimes they now make what are called lock boxes. Right. Um, that you can screw onto the garage door jam with a, a combination. Realtors use them all the time to get into, into locked properties. But they now make them for garage door jams so that if the kids are coming home from school, they forgot the key, they can still let themselves in by knowing the combination. Okay. And it's usually a, a three letter, you know, HQR or, you know, JET or. You know, whatever. Right, right. Yeah, mine is not as fancy as that. It's a piece of string attached to the opener, but it works if I ever need it. Do, do you keep your cars in the garage, or is it a workroom, or what? Do you, what what's in your garage? Um, I, I am fortunate enough, Barry, that years ago I built a two-car garage towards the back of the property, so I have four bays. Um, but, you know, in, in the front garage, yes, my son keeps his car. My wife, my wife keeps her car. In the back garage, I have an, an old pickup truck, you know, 1948 Chevy, and I keep my car there and my motorcycle. So um, for storage, I use the area above the front garage and above the rear garage. Nothing is ever stored above my bedrooms. But, I, 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 you know, I have a simple theory. If it hasn't been used in a year, it's out of here. That's, that's and, good, good uh, idea. And, and again, that's why you know if, if you if you tend to clutter, you don't even know what you have anymore. 
and uh, and I've decluttered homes for my family as they've aged or passed on, and it's it's a brutal, brutal task, and I don't wish that on anybody. So I, I'm very I'm very anal about my garages. Well, they have people that uh, are professional organizers, and sometimes uh, people need them. Uh, they they come in and they actually will throw stuff out for you or, or, or put stuff aside and organize uh, a mess and turn it into something that's much more orderly. Well, there's also companies out there, Barry. Again, Habitat for Humanity will pick up furniture. 1-800-JUNK or one of these guys will, will absolutely clean out your garage. Uh, sometimes, I'm unfortunately, a fiasco like Hurricane Sandy made us clean out our garage at the shore. Uh, and decide what you need and what you don't need. But that's, that's, the, that's the key to it. What do you need and what don't you need? And bottom line, folks, if you don't need it, get rid of it. Um, but what frustrates me is, you know, Jack will have a garage sale. Well, you know, people, uh, you know, get upset if it's, if it's a quarter or a dime. If it's a quarter, they're going to ask you for 15 cents. You know, I just, I don't get that whole thing. And then if you don't sell it, you know, and you did make your $10 where you've been outside all day for eight hours, um, then you put them in a way. There you go. <laughs> all right, well, on that happy note, uh, I'm, I'm going to go into my garage and start cleaning it out, and uh, we're out of time. Well, Barry, you know, next week, folks, I'm going to talk on thermostats because, um, I'm, again, I'm a cold-weather person. I still haven't put mine on yet. Uh, but I know within the next couple of weeks, we're going to go into that room that we don't use very often and start playing with my thermostat. So if you're at that point, folks, please listen in. I'm going to tell you how to use it properly and how it should really work to your advantage to keep the money in your wallet rather than go up the chimney. That sounds good to me. Well, Jack, always good talking to you. And everybody tune in again next week. Same time, same station right here at WWDB, WWDBAM.com for the House Whisperer Show with professional home inspector Jack Milne. And, boy, he knows everything about the house from the roof to the basement to the garage to the outside to the inside. Now, you can listen to previous programs, but if you have any questions, visit thehousewhisperershow.com. I'm Barry Reisman. Thanks so much for listening to WWDB. Very, very, very fine house With two cats in the yard Life used to be so